So I was really inspired by some of the Raspberry Pi Zero inside an SNES controller projects that I've, uh, I've seen out on the internet. And I just wanted to make a quick little video just to kind of showcase um, you know, my take on this really cool project. So the first thing I did is I actually mounted the Pi Zero to the outside of the case using one of the plastic cases you can get from Adafruit. And uh, you know, I think honestly this looks really cool like this. Um, and then the second reason I mounted it to the outside is, uh, you know, the more obvious reason is it gives me full access to the Pi Zero. Um, also mounted to the case is a, a dip switch um, on the top here. I got another, uh, it's a double pole, double throw switch, and then some LEDs, which I'll talk about that stuff in a minute. I chose a USB controller over a traditional SNES controller for a couple different reasons, but the main one is if you unplug the USB controller from the Pi Zero, plug in a uh, USB extender, um, you still have a fully functioning USB controller. And the second reason I chose a USB controller is with the USB controller plugged directly into the Pi Zero, it reduced any extra wiring I had to run up to the header. So I only have a, uh, it's a black and a red wire coming off it, which is a ground and five volts. And that's actually where the dip switch comes in, is those wires run directly to the dip switch and in the off position, it completely isolates the Pi Zero from the internal wiring. All right, so now that I've kind of showed you the outside, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the inside. So this is the front of the controller, um, and you got your D-pad and buttons and whatnot. And basically all I did on this side is I took the cable, I cut it to about seven inches, spliced the wires in, threw some heat shrink tubing on it, and that's it. Otherwise, this side is completely untouched. And on the back of the controller, on the inside, it had the 500 milliamp battery, Adafruit 500C booster, um, double pole, double throw switch, and some LEDs. The wiring is pretty simple. I got two wires coming off the header, the red and the black. That's five volt and uh, ground. The wires come through a hole behind the battery. Uh, they run up to the dip switch, through the dip switch, and then the five volt runs up to the, uh, the switch here on top. And then the ground runs directly over to the, uh, the booster slash charger. The top two lugs on the switch are the enable and ground coming off the booster. And in this position, it shuts the, uh, the booster off. The green LED runs down to the uh, full charge LED that's on the booster. The yellow LED runs down to the um, charging LED that's on the booster, and then the red runs down to the low battery indicator. In this position, the unit is basically off, although if you were to plug a USB cable into the Pi Zero and run that down to your computer and plug it in, it would turn the, the Pi on and start charging the battery, um, and the benefit of that is you can play and charge at the same time. Otherwise, the normal operating mode is you turn the switch on, turns the booster on, and you're running off a battery. This is the 500 milliamp hour battery um, I got it from Adafruit. And running Super Nintendo, playing A Link to the Past, it gave me about an hour and a half of playtime, uh, which is more than enough for me. I rarely have an hour and a half of downtime to actually sit and play a video game, so that works out fine for me. So I was going to try to fit a 1200 milliamp hour battery in, inside the case, which it probably would have fit, but I would have had to cut out the, the support here, which um, goes behind the D-pad. Um, you know, maybe in a future revision, I'll, I'll try it again, and maybe I'll, I'll get some standoffs to help push against the, the circuit board on the other side of the case. But for now, uh, the 500 milliamp hour battery works fine for me. Um, like I said before, I rarely get an hour and a half of free time to just sit down and play a game. So yeah, it works just fine. Now another detail I want to point out is on the header. I actually took a file and filed these two corners down as uh, they were kind of sharp and dug into my fingers as I was playing and kind of made playing a little uncomfortable, but I uh, just knocked those down a little bit and uh, yeah, it's so much more comfortable playing now. Now I did build five more of these and I'm planning on selling them probably on eBay. Um, just keep an eye on the description down below. I'll post a link uh, when I get those ready. Uh, it should probably be in the next day or two. Uh, now the ones that I am selling, We'll have an 8 gig SD card. It'll come pre-formatted with um, 4.02 RetroPie, which as of right now is the most current version. Uh, I'm not going to change any settings or anything, so it'll be a, just a pretty much a straight image. I will throw a few ROMs on for testing purposes, um, but for obvious legal reasons, I will be pulling those ROMs off before I ship them, as I can't legally uh, sell anything with uh, ROMs on it. But I have a feeling if you're watching this and you're into retro gaming uh, and retro pie, you probably know where to get ROMs or you already have a, a library yourself. So thanks a lot for watching and checking out my project. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, leave them below or you know, message me directly here on YouTube and I'll try to get back to you as uh, soon as I can. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks a lot.